Hello there, disposable masses. The irresponsible and power-crazed Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon is about to claim democracy will prevail while she begs Boris for another independence referendum. After ignoring the result of the recent democratic, once-in-a-lifetime independence referendum of 2014. How low does your IQ have to be to not understand this? As per usual, please like, subscribe and comment below. And when subscribing, please do press that little bell, but also select the All option, or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. It seems that Anne Nicola will be telling her party conference that she will be asking Boris Johnson for permission to hold a second independence referendum, the IndyRef2, in a spirit of cooperation. What she's actually saying is she'll go to Boris and beg him to cooperate with her in destroying the United Kingdom. The SNP and Nicola Sturgeon only want the cooperation to run one way towards Scottish independence, whatever the crippling consequences are for the people of Scotland. The SNP will take whatever they can from Westminster and spend it on the Indy project. But they will give nothing in return except obstruction and confrontation. And Boris has already given them access to another 300 million or so extra for them to add to their independence war chest, because 300 million quid more than they raise themselves will be given to Scotland under the national insurance changes. Wonder what it'll be spent on. And in a real show of their spirit of cooperation, the SNP Finance Minister Kate Forbes has pledged that Scotland will only transition away from fossil fuels within a timescale that protects jobs, presumably however long that takes. And her party has only just entered a loose coalition with the Scottish Greens, who want all fossil fuels to remain buried starting a week last Tuesday. In an interview with The Telegraph, Forbes said that the SNP won't be doing to their oil workers what Thatcher did to the coal miners, possibly forgetting that Labour shut down more pits than Thatcher ever did. But that aside, going about saving the planet at a leisurely pace will not be what the Greens want to see. More proof that the SNP sees Indy as everything. Let's see how long that particular cooperation lasts. The SNP do not do cooperation, something that will not be lost on the Eurocrats, and they won't want the likes of Ian Blowhard Blackford blustering all over Brussels either. They'd probably rather he stayed stuck firmly in the UK. Haven't the majority of the people of Scotland woken up yet to realise that the SNP is not there to bring democratic accountability closer to home, but to take it further away by handing it to puppet tin pot dictators like Sturgeon, who could not care less about democracy and are ready to hand the wealth, assets and people of Scotland over to the rule of Brussels? And within a heartbeat, she would be blaming all the woes of Scotland on the European Union, the very woes that she imposes on Scotland herself. The one thing the pandemic has taught us is that the leaders of our devolved and national governments are nothing more than self-serving charlatans who will sacrifice everything, including the lives of their citizens, to gain more control and power over us and then give them money to whomever they wish. And the only science they follow is that which gives them more control over you and your money. For them, you simply don't matter. You just exist to sustain their system. You are merely tolerated. And the UK government's response to the SNP is Westminster's answer to John Travolta, Michael Gove. Yes, he is claiming that the case for the union has never been stronger, citing the VAX programme as one reason. Speaking to politics home The House, Gove, who comes from Aberdeen, said that all he could see in Scotland was a waning appetite for both independence and an Indy Ref too. But even if he's right, Gove's voice will not be like listened to in Scotland. 
but what will be listened to are the voices closer to home, the voices of ordinary Scots who believe in being part of the United Kingdom. The trouble is, I wonder how many of them feel browbeaten and bullied into silence. That is not how democracy should work. But one campaign group standing proudly for the union is a force for good. And they've produced this passionate about the union little booklet called A Wee Book for the Union, which goes through a potted history of Scotland and the union and dispels some of the indie myths. It's worth getting a hold of a copy. And we should all realise that if a referendum were to be held and the SNP inevitably loses it, Sturgeon will be quickly replaced as leader in the same way her predecessor was, so they can swiftly kickstart the process again, claiming a new independence mandate because, I don't know, the pandemic recovery changes everything, or the wind's blowing in the wrong direction or something. So we must all have another referendum immediately, they'll say. Just as in 2014 they will completely reject any demo democratic vote they don't like and plough on regardless ad infinitum. So hypocritical. To them the voters are just disposable masses. The SNP does take its lessons from Brussels after all. So how can anyone really ever trust them? So what's your opinion on Sturgeon begging Boris for a referendum? Please like and comment below.